Hi, welcome to FAIR TV. I'm Peter Hart. One of the most glaring problems with corporate media coverage of the Ebola crisis is the overwhelming focus on the supposed threat here in the United States. So it was refreshing to see 60 Minutes correspondent Lara Logan head to Liberia, to the scene of the actual crisis. Her November 9th report was dramatic and quite moving. There was just one problem. CBS went all the way to Liberia, but didn't let any Liberians speak. CBS was focused on the American medical workers at one clinic, and there's no doubt they are a very brave and dedicated bunch. But foregrounding the American workers meant relegating Liberians to the background. Most of the staff here are Liberian, and to lift their spirits, they mark every new shift with hymns. The stigma of the disease is so great, many of them say they're treated as outcasts when they commute back home every day. But in here, the Americans who work with them call them heroes. So, as CBS reports, most of the workers at the clinic are Liberians, and the Americans consider them heroes, but CBS didn't think to include them in their report. Logan actually shows Liberian workers suiting up and then asks an American doctor to describe how hard it is to work in that protective gear. As former New York Times reporter Howard French, one of the most vocal critics of 60 Minutes, put it, it's the erasure of Africans from history, in this case their own history, and to reserve meaningful thought and agency to whites. A new book about his father has George W. Bush back in the news. So there he was on CBS's Face the Nation on November 9th, speaking with host and off-screen friend Bob Schieffer. The two look back at Iraq, puzzling over the fact that Saddam Hussein didn't accept Bush's ultimatum to leave his country in order to avoid the war. Were you surprised when you gave the ultimatum to Saddam uh, that he, he didn't leave? Did you think there was a chance he I, I really leave? did, yeah. You really did I think? did, yeah. But you thought that he would believe you and that he, he I, would leave. I, I thought there was a chance, yeah. I, I certainly hope so. But he didn't. And so that's why I put in the book, He Chose War. That exchange was also what CBS Evening News found particularly newsworthy. In 2003, that President George W. Bush ordered an invasion of Iraq after Saddam Hussein defied an ultimatum to give up power. Now, if you remember the run-up to the Iraq War, Bush's ultimatum to Saddam Hussein was indeed dramatic. But it was also not at all what it appeared. As Fair noted at the time, the New York Times had the story right on March 18, 2003. Their headline said it all. The paper noted that the U.S. military plan was to invade no matter what. Even if Mr. Hussein were to be ousted in a sudden coup, a military intervention seems very likely. The question no longer seems to be whether American and British troops will enter Iraq, but under what circumstances. Back to the CBS interview. When you say something as president, you better mean it. Now, maybe George W. Bush means what he's saying, but CBS might want to tell viewers, not to mention George W. Bush, that it just isn't true. Finally, a new assessment from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change sounded the usual alarms about the climate crisis, which meant it got passing coverage in TV news like this. A dire warning about climate change. Scientists claiming that unless we make some serious changes, the buildup of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere could soon lock the Earth in a, quote, irreversible course of global warming. Now, the right-wing Fox News channel also told its viewers about the IPCC report, but you might not be surprised to hear they did it in their own special way. During a news break on the Sunday Morning Futures show, Fox told viewers that the scientific panel recommended radical changes in order to avoid a crisis, and then, of course, they just had to throw in this. Critics, of course, have said that climate change, though, is largely not man-made. That's right, in a report that was all of 70 words, Fox still felt the need to add a reference to climate change denial. I guess that's what they mean by fair and balanced. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.